Hey YouTube, uh, today I thought I'd show you a suspension system I came up with in Gmod that I believe has advantages over using elastic for suspension systems. It's uh, independently suspended wheels using these red weighted blocks here as, as basically springs and this allows you to completely customize how the car sits and handles. So you can see here it's, it's as I drop it, it's very bouncy and maybe this is good for rock crawling and axle articulation and things. But if I take the weight tool and change the weight of these red blocks, then you should be able to see this time it's a lot more firm and springy and maybe that's good for race cars or whatever. Um, you can also use wire weights for this and I've used this before, it's quite good. It allows you to adjust the springiness of the wheels on the fly. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to make a suspension system like this. Uh, you're going to need a, a base plate. I'm using this uh, two meter square wire one from the um, Phoenix pack. Uh, this is a bar for steering, but whatever steering system you use should work. Uh, you're going to need four one meter by a quarter of a meter Phoenix blocks and some wheels and I've chosen these Jeep ones out of the excellent S-Prop pack. Um, okay, so I'm using the precision tool which is available in the workshop and I'm going to whack these blocks onto the edges of my base prop. And this gives me somewhere to put my wheels so I know they're all in the right place. And I'm going to set this to minus 100 so that I can uh, precision move the wheels to uh, exactly line up with the back of the block here. And uh, until um, Wenley gets around to releasing the um, uh, precision alignment tool for Gmod 13, uh, this is kind of important as to how this is built. Usually it wouldn't matter, but unfortunately at the moment it does. Um, so that's the wheels in the right layout. It's where we want them. And the next thing we need to do is uh, put in the blocks that are going to act as the springs. So I'm going to use the existing guides and just nudge them up a bit. And we're going to spawn some blocks. I need bigger ones for this one. But you can use whatever you want, it doesn't matter. If you're using uh, wire weights, you're going to have to go into the console unless you want to be using kettles. But it's not too difficult. Um, I might make another video on how to do that for people that don't know. So, for these ones, we're going to move from the middle here to the inside of this block so that the center of the block sits above the inside of the wheel um, because that's where the the ropes that comprise the arm of the suspension are going to go and uh, you'll make a mistake I've moved them too far down because I left it offset yeah um, Cool. So once that's done, we can get rid of these uh, large blocks, because we don't need those anymore. And that's basically all you need in terms of the suspension for unsteered wheels. Um, so what we're going to do now is weld the four spring blocks to the chassis, and then we're going to use ball socket center which is an excellent tool uh, to attach the wheels to the springs and make sure simple ball socket is ticked and uh, rotation constraint is off um, and then just select each wheel in turn and then its spring you don't need to worry about getting the centers I'm just picky Okay, and 
that is the basis of the spring system but we do need to define how the wheel is going to move because otherwise it's going to flop about because that's not doing a wonderful job of holding it because it's springy so I'm going to use rope for simplicity uh, third one over and just independent suspension arms to allow each wheel to move freely and this is for front and back wheels but uh, well, there's many variations on what you can do so feel free to experiment um, cool, that's all done no it isn't right, now it's all done and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the wheels are suspended now but there's nothing to stop them from wobbling about all over the place now you can't use an axis to stop them from you know, rotating or rolling. So what we're going to use is a uh, advanced ball socket. And you make sure free movement is ticked. And then the settings here will let you uh, set how you want the wheels to be locked. Now I use uh, minus 0.1 and 0.1 where I want zero. But if you put zero, it spazzes out. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. This is good enough for you know most uses. Um, this is set to steering wheel at the moment. So minus 0.1 and 0.1 and this I'm using the x-axis as the uh, the rotation axis here the x-axis goes this way so the wheel is going to rotate about it and I want the other ones locked so y is nothing and z is nothing because uh, these are going to be my unsteered wheels and just from the center of there to somewhere on there and that's our unsteered wheels done and hopefully, yep, that should work. Right, now for our steered wheels, it is a bit more complicated. I'm going to use the Z minimum to set the uh, amount that they're going to be able to pivot in the steering axis. I'm going to use 45 degrees, so of movement this way. It's purely personal preference. You can have as much or as little as you want. So, importantly, this time, you want to go from the chassis to the wheel, otherwise it tends to flop and spaz out because uh, everything's local to the first prop you click on so the wheel will flop and do things you don't want it to. So with a bit of luck that should have worked and now the next thing we need to do is put the steering bar on. So we're going to use the precision tool just to quickly snap it into the middle here and we're going to use our axis center tool to do that so that it can spin on the body and we're going to use the bull socket advance tool again to stop it from moving more than 45 degrees so X needs to be 0.1 minus 0.1 so that it can only move in the Z axis which is around and just from there to there and you'll see that it's now it locks itself at 45 degrees and then to do the uh, wheels to the bar, which slaves them to the bar so that they'll move in the same way. Um, yeah, we use the preset. It's an unsteered wheel, only move in the x-axis, not in the y or z. And then you can just go from the wheel, which you want to be steered, to the edge of the bar, and then the same on the other side. And then, unless I've forgotten anything, your chassis should be done. Oh, it's worth noting, you want to no-collide the uh, the spring blocks, otherwise they will bump into the wheels and uh, you will have a problem. Uh, I hope you found this tutorial useful, and I will put up a video at some point uh, with, with a motor and seats, so that you can see the chassis in action. Thanks for watching.